so often the time where what Adventists call the nominating committee comes, some people get a little pit in their stomach that goes, oh man, they're going to ask me to do something I don't want to do. Well, we would like from the very beginning to try to change that narrative because we believe that God has something completely different. While I introduce this, I'd like to invite the deacons to go ahead and come forward and pass out a survey like which you've probably not filled out before. Now, one is for adults, and as Jerry mentioned, there's one for children as well. So if you could pass this out while I'm talking, that'd be perfectly good and perfectly fine. So, what I'd like to begin with, first of all, is just tell you what we're going to be doing in the next few minutes. It's okay to look at and write on the survey while we're speaking up front. And I'm not going to be the only person presenting today. There'll be a few others that are going to be presenting from one of these four categories that are here, outreach, in reach, Sabbath school, and worship. Areas that are very important to the Orangevale Seventh-day Adventist Church. And while we're talking about these different areas, I know and I believe with all my heart that the Holy Spirit will be working on each one of us to share with us what he wants us to participate in these next few uh, days, months, and perhaps even a couple of years. But first of all, I'd like to set the basis for this. I appreciate the scripture today, found in 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to read it again, all right? The Barbuda children did a great job, and I, I really appreciate it. It says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Now that portion of Scripture comes right at the end of a section that Paul is using, the author of 1 Corinthians, to talk about the church, the body of Christ. Now we use that term, the body of Christ, pretty, um, well, Often we say it without even thinking about what it means. And Paul was very specific in this portion of 1 Corinthians 12 what the body of Christ means. And he uses the metaphor of our body. And he talks about when we've been baptized into Christ through the Holy Spirit, that we become a part of his body. But not all of us have the same role or function. And he makes the situation, or he talks about, if an eye says to another part of the body, you're not as important as I am being eyes, that that's ridiculous. He goes on to say that every single part of the body has a function. Now we know that, because when something goes wrong in our body, we may not even see it, but we feel it. And when something goes wrong, it really affects the entire body. But when everything is working together in our body, when everything is really clicking together and doing its role and doing its function, we have what we believe is health. Or we feel pretty good. We get tired. Things happen sometimes. But ultimately, we feel pretty good. And Paul has said that the body of Christ is just like that. We all have our role, and that role is different. We all have our function, and that function is different. I'd like to say we all have a passion for serving Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, but that will look differently from person to person. But the bottom line of 1 Corinthians 12, 27 is that we all are part of the body of Christ, 
All are part of the body of Christ. I'd like to invite Cyprian, who's going to be uh, our first presenter, to open our eyes a little bit to outreach in the Orangeville Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dunn, for inviting me. I'm going to turn on a timer because uh, if you know me, you will know that Frequently, there's a little hook that has to come from the side to pull me off because I tend to drone on and on and on and on long after your eyes glaze over. You're not willing to listen anymore. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, outreach today. And uh, first of all, you know, just to understand, like, what does outreach even mean? Um, because when I outreach at first, um, I actually was thinking more about in-reach than outreach. So as far as, you know, what outreach for our church is, is reaching out to our local community, people on the outside, to try to give them information, try to give them, um, bring them in, right? We, our goal of outreach is to, to bring people from the outside that may not have any knowledge of God or may have had a relationship with God and have gone astray. Um, so what do we do here at this church to reach out to the community and try to make a positive difference in their world? Uh, one of the more obvious ones is going to be our clothes closet or the food closet across the way. Um, that provides a needed service for, for, for folks in the community here. Um, you know, food, water, shelter are the kind of the base needs of humanity um, that are necessary for survival. So, you know, to t try to take somebody who's hungry, thirsty, doesn't have a place to live and teach them about the importance of a particular Bible verse, they, they may not want to or be able to understand that, to try to teach that to a five-year-old kid. They're not ready to understand that, but they're, they can, they can detect when somebody is being kind and loving and respectful. So that's one area that, that, we, that we provide to the community. The other one that's pretty obvious is across on the other side of the campus here, uh, the school. And that's, you know, kind of where in my life right now, um, I see that a lot because I have three kids that go to the school over there. And so the, you know, the administration, the teachers, the people who help, everybody there is, you know, they're teaching their kids math and science and spelling and all the other stuff that they have to learn. But more importantly, they're teaching them the character of a godly person. They're teaching them the integrity of what, how you live your life as a godly person. They're, you know, they're teaching them particular scriptures and things like that. And so that is an area where, um, you know, people come to this school that may not even be Christians or may be different type of Christians than Adventists. So um, that's an area that, um, that we can outreach uh, to the community. Uh, other things that we've done in the past, um, coming up in a few weeks, we'll have a harvest festival. Um, that is a, that's a, you know, when people drive by, they'll see kids and inflatables and all kinds of fun stuff. And they'll be curious. They'll be like, what's going on over there? And so when we walk around, even as spectators, even, you know, um, just being present on that day, we can be examples to the community of what's up with these Adventist people? Aren't they just the vegetarians that tell us not to do fun stuff on Saturday? You know, there, you know there's a much more to, to following God. And we all know that. But, um, you know, we... That is an opportunity for us to reach out to the local community through a fun game and, and be able to make a connection with them so that they can receive um, something from God from us, through us. When I was in, in high school, um, the first summer after I graduated high school, I worked at uh, Leone Meadows. I was a summer camp counselor. And um, the first week of summer camp, you know, when you go up as staff, you, you know, you put the camp together, you, you know, you 
clean up everything, clean up all the leaves, make sure it's ready for the campers. Um, but that's also a time where you receive training to, to be a camp counselor. And so when I went, I had zero experience taking care of anybody. I had zero experience taking care of myself. I didn't know how to do laundry. I didn't know how to prepare food. I'm one of those lucky people who had mommy do everything for them. So when I went up there, I had no idea what I was signing up for, what I was going to do. I thought I was just going to go drive go-karts with the kids. So oh, there's my timer. Anyways, I, uh, through that week of training, we had a, we had a, um, a slogan. And our slogan was, actions speak louder than words. And so the camp director impressed upon us that it doesn't really matter what you say to these kids. They see way past that. They see through your actions to the heart. And, and, and you know, that kind of stuck with me over the years that, you know, what we do is more important than what we believe and what we say. And so, in closing, um, I just wanted to reach out to you. There's, there's uh, so much more that we could do to the local community here. There's interest, that, you know. I see people kind of look over when we're out there uh, after church, when they're doing their, their Saturday jog. I see that they're interested in what's going on in that, in that building over there. Why are these people meeting on a Saturday? Um, and so I, I, I'd like to ask that you consider in any area of, of service, there's plenty of opportunities for us to, to do things for, um, for outreach for the community. Um, my old church had this little sign built on, on they had an enclosed campus like this. And when you would drive out, there was a sign that said, you're now entering the mission field. So, you know, our, you know we're called to, be, to, be, to, to come to church, to give our tithes, to, to do all the things that are necessary here. But we're also called to reach out to other people, to bring them in also, so that they can receive the um, knowledge of God too. Um, and then uh, the other thing I wanted to say was a statement by... Sir Francis of Assisi, who said, preach the gospel always, at all times, and when necessary, use words. Thank you, Cyprian. I was waiting for the postlude music to usher him off like the Oscars. We're going to need to implement that, or he'll take up all our time. I'll go fast to balance it out. My name's Mark Smith, for those that don't know me. I um, am privileged and pleased to, to say I've been here for 24 years. I married into the church through my wife. Um, I am head deacon, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what the deacons and deaconesses do, or what we should be doing, and with your help can do. The potential is the limit. It's as Potential is whatever you're willing to put in, that's what we can do. And I'm hoping you guys are willing to help because this church is as good as you are willing to put into it. And we don't have a pastor right now, so there's no one to point the finger at except ourselves. We have the opportunity to make this as awesome as we want, the way we want it. Uh, so I, I hope you will join me in that endeavor. As a deacon and deaconess, we um, are responsible for opening the buildings, mainly on Sabbath, but there's also memorial services, weddings, vespers, etc. We have the keys, so we get to open up, close up the facilities afterwards. So we come early to Sabbath service, we stay late, make sure everyone's out of here, then lock everything up. Uh, we also assist the pastor with communion services, passing out the emblems, uh, Baptist, baptistries. Um, one part that we can be very... Um, impactful is the first level of support in the grounds maintenance, minor repairs, things that need to be done around the church to help keep it in working order and keep our costs to a bare minimum. Because as you've seen in the, um, the back of your handout of the bulletin is our budget is very tight, so the deacons and deaconesses can make a huge impact in helping keeping our costs down and keeping our church running smoothly. Uh, that's about it. It's... Uh, behind the scenes, so if you don't like talking in front of people like I don't, it's a great opportunity for you to have an impact but not have to say anything or talk to anyone. Um, 
That's why I do it. I don't know why I'm up here, because I can't say no. But, um, and I'll just close with one of my favorite passages from the book of Mark. It says, blessed are those that give with their wallet, but most bl blessed is, what is it, Mike? Most blessed are those that give with their time. I just set my timer. Um, I, I'm Christina Nadler, uh, some of you might know me, um, and I've been in this church for about eight years. And I have to say, I was thinking about what I was going to say up here today uh, regarding the um, in-reach, or outreach, <laughs> I think we're coming a little bit of both. And I was thinking, I think this is the ADD church, because there's so many people here that love to serve and are so helpful, and whenever we have an activity at the end, they all get together and clean up and just put things away. And, you know, I know several people that are like, you know, Sabbath school and in nominating committee and in boards and, and you know, uh, just doing so many things, so that's why I call it the ADD Church. But there is something for everyone here. There is a position for you just waiting for, for your energy and your passion to show. And um, we would love to have you. So if you can fill out these forms and sign up for as many as you would like, um, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, one that is near and dear to my heart is decorating. <laughs> well, <laughs> not too much right now, but um, we're about to start with our fall decorations. It's not a lot of work, but if you are interested in, in um, helping out, we set up a few decorations in the fall and a few others around Christmas time and some flowers for Easter. Um, so it's not a, a big commitment, uh, but we definitely do need your help. In the past years, we've uh, decorated here on a Saturday night. We set up the Christmas tree. Cherie, my uh, trusted partner in crime, um, we end up coming here during the week sometimes, but even kids, my son Daniel, um, he often helped with the Christmas tree. The Sissel boys would come and try to um, climb up the ladder to set up the Christmas tree that you see up there. Um, so children are welcome, parents are welcome. If you have an interest, I will be out over there by one of the signs, or you can just fill out the one here on the sheet. The other one that we definitely need uh, a few of you is for greeters. Somebody who, it's, it's not a hard job to do. You don't have to print bulletins or anything. Those are already ready for you in the back. You just have to have a smile on your face and say hello to people and give them a bulletin or tell them to find it online. And sometimes direct them to the different Sabbath schools. But you know, um, saying hello has to people. I'm a greeter, and I have really been blessed. I have met some very interesting people. Um, just, it's been a blessing to me, and I know it will be to you as well. Um, we also have women's ministries we, uh, that you can get involved with if you're interested in doing, I don't know, uh, retreats for women, or talks, or spa days, you know, organizing things like that, or helping out with a tea. Um, that we would greatly appreciate your help in that. Um, as well, uh, we've done hiking in the past where uh, large groups of us have gone on hikes near and far. So if you're interested in that, in um, organizing them or just joining us. Also, we are wanting to start game nights at the gym on Saturday night, uh, potlucks if you want to help set things up or if you want to help lead them. We can use your help in many different departments. Um, children, we can use your help as well. We have little forms for you if you want to help clean up the snacks that kids leave behind after church. We can use your help with that. Greeting, gardening, uh, setting up tablecloths for potlucks, anything like that. You. Children, your help is needed, so don't forget to sign up, okay? Thank you very much, and I hope that you find uh, a place where you can serve, and um, God will bless you for it. Thank you.
Good morning. Um, I'm going to start by saying uh, I didn't hear a thing anybody said from the, the second church started until just now, just so you know. So, um, because this will all play into what I'm talking about today. So instead of asking you to, to volunteer, this is kind of like a plea or a prayer, um, because I now know that my kids are starving. Um, one's freezing. One is super hungry. One wants to go home and take a nap. And in a matter of five minutes, I was the best mom and the worst mom ever. So, um, and with that, I am up here to talk to you about Sabbath school and our need for Sabbath school. Um, Sabbath school classes were in need of volunteers for both our adult and our children classes, which is super ironic that I'm up here talking about that because I don't volunteer for any of them. <laughs> But, I mean, it's funny how God works because um, I, like Mark, cannot stand getting up here and talking in front of people. Um, this is just not my thing. Um, you know, I feel like I want to throw up every single time. So thank you, Mike, wherever you are. There you are. Um, but, like, so the, when I got the text that, to ask to fill in, I was like, uh, you know, sh this person, she, she's of service to the church all the time. And I thought, I don't want to say no, but I really don't want to speak in front of the church. And I'm like, I will volunteer Cyprian. And <laughs> I'm going to say yes. And then I'll tell Cyprian when I get home that he has to speak tomorrow <laughs> in front of the church. <laughs> so I got home and I told Cyprian, hey, guess what? You get to be of service at church. And he's like, oh, I can't. I'm already being of service at church. And I was like, wait, what? And instantly I wanted to throw up because I knew <laughs> that God was telling me that I was going to have to be of service today. So, and I do have a passion to serve God. So like it or not, here I am. So, okay, Sabbath school classes. We are um, in need of teachers. So if that is a passion for you, or even if you're willing to help out, um, I know my kids don't sit still during classes, so I'm sure they can always use an extra body to help out there. Um, we would like to start bringing back children's church. Um, that's when once a month the kids will leave um, the service and go to the other building and give people like me a chance to hear five minutes of the sermon. Um, and probably all you too, because I'm pretty sure you can hear my kids where I'm at. Um, so I would encourage you, if you're interested in that, to come see me after. I'm going to be over there and see how you can be of service for that. Um, I'm going to tell you a really quick story. Um, I know for me, when somebody asks me to be of service, um, I, I think about, like, what, what do I have to give? You know, like, who am I? What could I possibly say that would help somebody? But I know that if I have just a little bit of willingness that God can use me to bless other people. Um, when I, probably about six years ago, I threw a little party at my house. I, there's some, a lot of people I knew, a lot of people I didn't know. Um, and Lucas was probably about four years old. And, <laughs> and he, uh, we were not a big fan of smoking and, and uh, we had talked to him about smoking because somebody in our family member had smoked and he, um, asked about it, right? Um, I am going somewhere with, with this. Uh, <laughs> he saw a man out there smoking, and he, he's four years old, and he goes up to this guy, and he starts telling him how he was killing himself, <laughs> and how he was destroying his lungs, and that, I mean, he went on and on and on. The, the man told me that he must have spoke for 30 minutes about how he was going to die, and that if he didn't stop smoking immediately, that his dad was going to come over and, and push him down the hill. Um, I'm not even making this up. So, so the guy told me about that, and he goes, I have never been more schooled by anybody in my entire life, much less a four-year-old. Um, and a about a year later, that same man texted me, and he said, I just want you to tell your son that I quit smoking and that I'm coming up on a year of no smoking. And... <laughs> And to this day, he texts me every year. Last year, he said, hey, guess what? I'm celebrating six years that I haven't had a cigarette. And if God can, right? If, if God can use a tiny four-year-old 
to have that big of an impact on somebody's life, I'm pretty sure he can use one of us to, um, you know, our, the kids are the future, you know, they're the future of this church and they need our love and our guidance. And often I don't think they hear, but they do. And if God can use a tiny rock to take down, a, you know, a giant, he can use us to do some pretty amazing things. So I'll be over there. Come see me after. Good morning. I'm Jody Dilger, and I've had the privilege of uh, leading the music here for the last six years. Oh, thank you. When I took this assignment, we had about 20 people doing music, and now we have 35. <laughs> So I am just so excited that God is blessing our music here. Uh, we have a variety of praise teams. Uh, we have, sometimes it's just one voice, sometimes it's many voices, but we celebrate a variety of worship here at Orange Vale, and so you're always welcome to sing along. Um, some teams need less corralling than others, <laughs> less shepherding, but we won't mention any names, you know. <laughs> but there's a lot of healthy banter and people feel comfortable to be themselves and sometimes we we always have prayer together um, it's just a little like a small group as it were and so if you know anyone who would like to help with our praise teams or our service music or perhaps a special music feel free to speak to me afterwards uh, we try to do and our current vision as we go forward would be a blend of praise songs and hymns. So um, anyway, I wanted to share what I see ministry being, and that is it's a full circle. You know, when we're giving, we're receiving even more. And that's the whole circle of ministry that God would have us to understand. And I just love it when my praise team members say to me, you know, Jody, I really enjoy the music today. Thank you for including me. I, I love the songs, and I really worshiped. You see, they're giving, but they're receiving as well. And that's the full circle of ministry when we're truly serving Jesus. So I continue to pray, and I ask you to pray and support and bless our music here at Orange Vale. Thank you so much. So, service. I want to say a special thank you to those who participated from the beginning to uh, as we conclude this service. As you can see, God's not so much interested in what we feel comfortable with. He's interested in using us in ways he has gifted us with. Those are two separate things. We hope that you'll take these surveys seriously. Don't just mark one thing. You can mark more than one, and they will be very helpful as we begin, or as we continue this process of staffing the different areas of the church. If you're finished with your survey right now, or at the end of church, then you can just put it on the table where the offering is by the audiovisual booth. So you can just leave it there. And also your pencils can be left there too, because we plan to use those again. So those nifty little pencils that uh, Mark uh, procured for us, we'd like to use those again. So please drop those off in the very same place in the back of the church. There's one more activity that we need to do as a church because healthy bodies and healthy churches continue to grow because God continues to bring people in. He continues to refresh the gifts that each congregation needs and he gives those blessings to different people. John and Monica Hayden have been a part of our church for, I'm not exactly sure how long, since I've only been here four years, my wife and I, but okay, three years. It's been quite a while. 
And they have asked to bring their membership to this church. First of all, I'd like them to stand and their beautiful daughter here. Usually, they are almost always somewhere, you can be seated, they're almost always somewhere in the front. So they're part of the front crowd and uh, very helpful in telling children's stories and many things like that. So it's our privilege as a part of the body of Christ to bring them in formally into church membership. Is there anyone that would like to make a motion to accept them into church ministry? Or church membership? Okay, it's moved. Second? All right. All those in favor, I would just like to hear a resounding amen. amen. Welcome officially, even though you've been a part of our family for years. Welcome to the Orangevale Seventh-day Adventist Church. We look forward to worshiping together as we continue this. So, as a part of the body of Christ, where is God prompting you to serve? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath. We thank you for worship, but we also thank you for the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives to actually give us the opportunity to work with you in outreach, in reach, Sabbath school and worship, and perhaps other areas that we don't even know of at the moment. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.